As we observed in the uh, previous module on nucleation, that the nucleation process requires a certain amount of supercooling. Crystal growth also requires some supercooling, although the extent of required supercooling is small. Since even supercooling of 0 0.1 degree Celsius can cause growth of ice crystals, we can see that in this plot where we have a rate of crystal growth plotted against temperature. Notice that the temperature decreases as you move from left to right hand side. So you will note that even a small temperature decrease below 0 degrees C is uh, sufficient to cause the growth of ice crystals. So how does crystal growth occur? To answer this question, let us consider this figure where we will look at a uh, perfect nucleus as shown schematically. Uh, this was uh, presented first by Professor Fenema. The crystal growth is considered analogous to adding bricks to a wall. When a cubic molecule attaches to the surface at site A, only one of its surfaces is held by the hydrogen bond, in this case the ice crystal, whereas a molecule at site B is attached by two of its sides, as you see in this figure, and a molecule at site C is held most firmly as three of its sides are attached. Thus, molecule at site C is more firmly attached than molecules at sites A or B, demonstrating that the nucleus site and plane of attachment are important for crystal growth. This uh, simplified visualization illustrates that the attachment surface of the crystal is important to its growth. On a corner that sticks outward, there will be more loosely bound molecules per unit volume of ice. These molecules would tend to leave the ice, promoting melting. On the other hand, in corner regions that jut inward or a concave surface, the freezing process will be more dominant. The rate of crystal growth is influenced by both heat and mass transfer. A qualitative description of these processes was also suggested by Professor Fenema. Consider a solution containing a solvent A and several solutes, let's say uh, B, C, D, and so on. The rate at which the solvent, for example water, will crystallize is limited by the slowest of heat and mass transfer. We can examine the mass transfer in this solution by observing that molecules of solvent A, that is water, will move to the crystal surface and seek a stable site for attachment. These molecules will orient themselves while attaching to the surface so that there is maximum stability to the neighboring molecules. At the same time, any of the molecules of solutes B, C, D and so on present along the interface will need to move away into the solution for the growing ice crystal. This phenomenon is easily observed if we take a sample of water containing a solute, for example a dye, uh, such as a fountain pen ink, and we freeze that sample as shown in this figure, where as ice forms, the unfrozen water fraction becomes more concentrated with the solute, darkening its color as the ice crystals form. The second mechanism influencing rate of crystal growth is related to heat transfer. As we had seen before, ice formation is accompanied by heat of crystallization, which must be removed from the interface. When we compare the influence of both these mechanisms on crystal growth, it becomes evident that the rate of crystal growth is largely limited by the rate of heat transfer. In most practical applications, the low thermal conductivity of foods limits heat transfer. Mass transfer has a minimal role in the early stages of freezing, when there are numerous solvent, that is water, molecules 
that can freely move to the growing surface. However, at low temperatures, towards the end of freezing, the viscosity of the sample may increase sufficiently to prevent uninhibited movement of water molecules.